Welcome, this is Jason Dinbo. We're going to share a video of a robotic right hepatectomy in a patient who had bilateral colorectal liver metastases with two left-sided lesions that were treated previously and required a portal vein embolization. Of note, the anatomy is also a portal vein trifurcation. We'll jump right in uh, to the surgery. We always start with the intraoperative ultrasound, as you can see here. Uh, to evaluate the anatomy, also look for lesions. Here we are looking for the ablated lesions in segment two to make sure they still look treated. Here we're identifying the middle hepatic vein and following it down to the hilum. First, we need exposure, so we always place a Penrose drain to pull up on the falciform ligament. If the gallbladder is intact, you can actually use that as traction as well to expose the hilum. Here the patient had been given ICG in the preoperative area about an hour and a half before surgery. Here we're doing the uh, cholecystectomy. This is the cystic duct. We place a silk tie and then also a WEC clip. We place the silk tie so that those sutures can then be grasped by the assistant and retracted to the patient's left to aid exposure to the hilum and to the uh, portal vein pedicles, which are positioned posteriorly and on the right lateral aspect. Here we have the right hepatic artery that we are isolating. You can see that tie there is actually on the stump of the cystic artery. Here we're encircling the right hepatic artery. There were no arterial anatomic variants in this patient. Likewise here we're going to place a uh, silk tie proximal and then WEC clip distal. And also we're placing a silk tie on the liver aspect, that is because this, we can use this as a retraction to expose the underlying portal vein. Also this way, if we had divided it with a wet clip, wet clip, sometimes those wet clips can get in the way if you're gonna use a stapler to divide a branch of the portal vein. Here, as I said previously, it's a portal vein trifurcation, which you will see very clearly. Here we are isolating the right posterior portal pedicle and you can see just posterior to that artery is the anterior, and then now you're visualizing the left portal pedicle. So you can see all three of the branches there in that view. As I mentioned before, this patient had portal vein embolization of the right anterior and right posterior portal pedicles. There's ICG to see the hilar anatomy. Here we are with continued dissection to provide access to encircle the right posterior portal pedicle. We commonly use pinch burn technique with the uh, Maryland Bipolar. Dissecting out the uh, crotch, the space between the right anterior and the right posterior. Here you'll see that we encircle this with a vessel loop. Typically when you have uh, type one or normal portal venous anatomy, we will control the right portal vein with silk ties and WEC clips. Here the space was very limited uh, to be able to do that. We decided it would be better to divide this with a, a vascular stapler. There was space to get this small signia stapler in there with a white load. So there, the right posterior portal pedicle has been divided. Now we're going to work on isolating and then dividing the right anterior portal pedicle. More pinch burn. You can see I switched the Maryland to my other hand, to my left hand, because there was better access here posteriorly. Same thing, vessel loop to control the structure. This also helps with uh, creating, make sure, making sure you have enough space here uh, to place the uh, vascular stapler. As you can see, we're pulling down on the structure that we want to protect, which is the main and the left portal vein, to give us that additional space to divide the stapler, make sure we're not narrowing the left portal vein, which we're not. Here you can actually see uh, the bifurcation of, or the confluence of the right and left hepatic ducts. Okay, now we're doing the liver mobilization. 
As you might notice before, we didn't do any mobilization until this point. Here we're dividing the falciform ligament, which will carry down to the right coronary ligament and also divide the right triangular ligament. Here we're going to expose the veins suprahepatically here. Obviously, specifically, we're most interested in the right vein and the middle vein here, that crotch between the two. Since we're planning a, a formal anatomic right hepatectomy in the patient. Here we are dividing the right triangular ligament. Here, arm four is actually providing retraction on a sponge to pull the liver to the right. You can see each time I move it provides additional exposure. Okay, here we are uh, continuing the mobilization until we see the cava. You see the cava there on the inferior aspect of that uh, image. Continuing the mobilization all the way up to that right hepatic vein that you see there. You can see the short um, cable branches, short hepatic veins there draining straight into the cava. It'll take those shortly. We still we use a lot of pinch burn to isolate these structures. The small little things will just use pinch burn. The larger structures will either take with a vessel sealer clips. You'll see. This one was sizable enough that we disabled it with a vascular stapler. more pinch burn. We want to expose the entire anterior surface of the cava so that when we're dividing the liver parenchyma, we have plenty of it exposed. You'll see later that we will place a lap on the anterior surface of the cava, a ray tech. Here's Makuchi's ligament that we're isolating with the Marilyn. We have the angled part of the Maryland up against the right hepatic vein. We'll isolate it here and uh, secure with this vessel loop, which then we can use to manipulate the space to get a vascular stapler in there to divide Makuchi's ligament, which will expose the underlying right hepatic vein. We will divide the right hepatic vein at the end of the case, but you can see the space there. Here we finish developing this space between the right and the middle. Clear demarcation of the liver, you can see. Using ultrasound to confirm, you can see the posterior shadowing of our score mark and its relationship to the middle vein. That's what we're evaluating here. Next, we're gonna place our traction sutures. So what we use is a 3.0 silk cut to 12 centimeters and we use a 10 centimeter quarter inch Penrose drain. It's a figure of eight suture. And what this provides is this provides uh, traction. So typically one of the robotic arms, usually arm four, and then also the assistant will help with exposure here during the transection. You can see there's, there's corresponding, so one on either side of the plan transection plane so that we can open it like a book. Here we use an extra corporeal Pringle. We use a 24 French chest tube. We use Pringle routinely to try and make this as bloodless as possible. When there's no blood and you can see the structures, it works very well. So when you're performing a formal right epitectomy, the middle vein is staying. And one thing we were looking at in the ultrasound was to identify the V5 and V8 drainage veins, which we, you will see here in a little while. But really what we have created with our technique here is we're trying to recapitulate what we do in the open technique. We, When we do open liver resections, we use a two surgeon technique such as this when we're using the CUSA, which is on screen left here which is essentially 
aspirating the tissue, leaving the vital structures behind. Here we're using the vessel sealer for a lot of the division. We will also use Maryland Bipolar from time to time with the pinch burn technique to divide small bands of tissue. But as you can see this technique with a Pringle in place, uh, there's very little blood loss and allows you to see all the intrahepatic anatomy. Here we encircled the V5 branch and we're dividing it with a vascular stapler. It was really kind of a confluence of veins. But the middle vein is still screen right, patient's left. You can see that exposure with those traction sutures. Here we're verifying our transection plane. You can see that shadowing posteriorly is the um, side of parenchymal division. And surgery cell will, also, will always show up as a hyperechoic feature on the ultrasound, which is helpful. You can see we didn't cut this in a straight line because of the area of demarcation. We wanted to keep it as anatomic as possible. Knowing that if we kept this anatomically on the middle vein, that all of the lesions in the patient's right lobe would be removed. You can see the middle vein in the picture there. We're just staying on the patient's right side of that middle vein. There's a small segment eight drainage vein that we're dividing. When we do the Pringle maneuver, we go uh, on Pringle for 15 minutes and then five minutes off to allow the liver to perfuse and continue to repeat. Here's some Maryland just using some pinch burn. You didn't see it much in this video, but that's also a technique that we utilize. You can see the middle vein in the bottom right of the screen there. So we're working cephalad towards the dome of the liver. We will divide, we're gonna divide the right hepatic vein as essentially the last step of the procedure. So here we are returning to the hilum of the liver. We had not divided the hilar bile duct yet. We prefer to divide this intrahepatically so that we can keep the left hepatic duct as far away from the transection as possible so that we don't want to narrow the left hepatic duct when you're performing a right hepatectomy. You can see we did encircle the right anterior sectoral bile duct there with a the blue vessel loop. And we're retracting the hilar duct to the patient's left to ensure that there won't be any narrowing. Okay, here in the back, we've turned our attention to now that the bile duct has been divided. We're dividing um, this plane transection between the right lobe and the caudate lobe. So the caudate lobe is screen right. Segment six. Seven and eight are all to your screen left. You can see in the 
poster aspect of that video there, that is that ray tech that we set on the cava uh, to protect the cava. Now we are moving cephalad towards the right hepatic vein. There's very little tissue left. You'll see the right hepatic vein very clearly here in a moment. The CUSA is a wonderful instrument for liver surgery. You'll see that we can use this instrument directly on the right hepatic vein, not cause any type of injury, as long as you have the appropriate settings and know what you're doing. So you can see this is the right hepatic vein, and we're going to divide that uh, with a with a stapler. Place the specimen in a bag. Traction sutures help for that too. This is removed through a fan and steel. Ultrasounding the liver remnant. Here you can see segment two and three pedicles. It's documenting there's good blood flow in those pedicles. Here we're gonna remove our traction sutures and just score the liver capsule at those sites. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, port placement and setup now. Um, you might not have realized it, but we kind of we jumped ports at some point. So this here is our standard setup. Um, that assistant port is in the right midclavicular line, and that's where we use the laparoscopic CUSA. It's also where we use the robotic ultrasound probe. You can see where the camera is, just off, just the right uh, patient's right side of midline. Now, when we're mobilizing the liver and dividing the right coronary and right triangular ligaments, and then the short branches, hepatic vein branches onto the cava, it's difficult to see that if your camera is still near midline. So we will actually uh, jump the ports. So I will move the camera um, to that midclavicular 12 port and then move the other, the arm three and arm four over as well, which provides better visualization and it's easier to complete this dissection. Uh, and then once that part of the dissection is done, then we'll go back to our other typical port setup. Um, I thought that would be helpful to um, illustrate for everyone. So this is our robotic surgery team and we would like to thank you so much uh, for, for watching. Reach out and like and share and ask questions. Thanks, bye.